I'm Ruganzu Bruno. I was one of the speakers who were meant to have and share their knowledge on the TEDx Kaltum event yesterday that was unfortunately cancelled. And I do believe that knowledge cannot be stopped. An idea will always explode and expand. And when you come from Uganda and you're in Sudan, just to share the idea, it's always important that you leave it there. So this is how my talk was going to be yesterday. The Bejirawea pyramids, such an awesome historical place. How many of us know it exists? It took me two to three days before I came to actually read something, but there was nothing showing that there were pyramids in Sudan. So I took my time to research through the contacts that I had, and they showed me that it's possible. So it was one of the places we visited. And I'm telling you, this is a place to visit. Sudan has the oldest pyramids in the world. So how does that connect to my story? I looked at the civilization back in time when they were making this architecture, awesomely made with lines, straight, curves on an angle, just the way they wanted. There was a need to make these pyramids. Today, with the technology that we are having, we could do much better. So I set out to see how was technology affecting my community. And first, we looked at also the issues that are to do with climate change. Yes, you are all aware it's a big problem. Waste is the biggest problem that is untalked about in the developing countries. The main things that they are looking at too are like politics, the fighting for space, corruption, but then nobody is caring about the environment. When you walk through these developing cities, you will see that we have so much waste that not everyone is really willing to have a thought on how to reuse, on how to recycle, on how to be responsible for your environment. The picture shows you the village I was born in, in Kavali, a beautiful place in the southwestern part of Uganda. How amazing it is to grow around trees, nature, environment, so much inspiration for your drawing, for your day-to-day -day activities. Then I moved to the city, Kampala, and it is an awesome, beautiful city, so much green, built on seven hills, but now they have expanded to 17 or more because it keeps expanding. But as the city expands, also issues to do with the environment become so sensitive. So if the community is not willing to realize that we have to be responsible for how we manage our waste, who is going to do it? So I set out with my art to do eco art projects where I would go to street art festivals, to gatherings with the structures that you're seeing unfinished. Invite people from the audience to build with me and we would set up examples of huge art installations. And my most successful work was to use symbolism. My first work had a map of Uganda, which we are all proud of. Like you see in the stage design we did, we have a map of Sudan outlined with green. The more important thing is everybody would love to see Sudan more green like it is. But it's not the reality. So what can we do to do that? So we set out on, on these events and people were joining in one by one, building this big, beautiful waste installations that people would see beauty in it. And before I knew it, I was an innovator. Just like the people who lived in the pyramid time. How was I going to share it more with the community? So I outsourced, and through Facebook, I found that there was a TEDx event where people were sharing their ideas. 
oh, how could I have done this? If 99% don't even know what TEDx means, if TEDx events are shut down like yesterday, a place where you feel it's a platform for sharing ideas, knowledge, is seen as something that is not to be shared, seriously, it breaks my heart. So I set out in Kampala, did these installations, and then we collected so much waste that we built a hand, like you see in the picture. The hand is the one that is throwing the waste into the environment. But we can use it to clean. You are driving a beautiful car in your city, and you have the guts to throw the bottle out because you don't care. Why are you doing that? What are you leaving for the next generation? This is your country. You have to love it. So I won the Young Achievers Award in 2011. I felt some satisfaction, but there was something missing. In Uganda, they always give uh, the most outstanding youth an award for their participation, for their engagement in projects that help the community. But where do you stop from there? How do you spread it much more to feel the passion in you? It's not about titles. It's not about awards. When you greet a professor here, anywhere, whether where I'm lecturing in the university, they want a name doctor. They want the title. How is that contributing if they are not publishing? if they are not sharing their knowledge. Are we fighting to get these titles? So we looked back into the picture and said, where do I fit myself? How do I get involved? So I was nominated for the TED Prize in Doha in 2012. And I went with my ideas. Remember, it has to start from something. Nobody wants to help you unless you have a platform, unless you're doing something by yourself first. Others will always join if they see that you believe in your dream. So I presented the past projects that I was doing, and I had an idea, an idea that could not be stopped because I believed in it. I wanted to create a playground where children would play in a place where there is none. We have so much development that is going on, and it leads to so much development of slums. Who wants to stay in a slum anyway? Where is the space for play? How are our children engaged in play? Are they seated on playstations? Are they making toys themselves? How are they participating in learning through play? So we set out after the third prize. I came back to my country. I went to my community and I said, hey guys, we have this project. We are going to build the playground. And who were the brains behind the ideas? It was the children, because the playground was for them. So they took part in building this playground. And most importantly, it was to let them know how to sustain it. In case I'm not there, I'm just an artist. If I share my knowledge, they can go ahead and create other awesome things. So we made the project successful. In September 2012, the program was completed, and it was amazingly finished. And now it's being used by the community. I felt this is awesome. I want to, I want to do more. I want to explore more. So. I keep sharing my ideas using social networks, and I got invited to the World Social Forum in Brazil, in Porto Alegre. I was fascinated by how the locals, the fishermen, collect waste from the river. Just like you guys have the Nile. They have a period where they are not fishing. They collect waste from the river, and in return, the administration, the municipal council, they pay for their health, they provide them food supplies. Such an awesome idea exchange. So they were able to collect a ton of waste 
in two weeks, which we use to make an installation on the space outside the World Social Forum. We shared with so many people about their ideas, and it was awesome. And this brings me to my trip to Sudan, to the people, the beautiful people who we actually don't get to know about because the media or the publications that come out are always on the other story of Sudan. You need to be here to see it yourself. So I came with my ideas of creating this awesome stage that we have. My idea was to make the Nile, which is the la long, largest and longest river in the world. It's a natural heritage. It's amazing because it's supplying more than five countries with water and they're all surviving on it. But it starts in Uganda, my country. We have the source of the Nile. Recently, there's been so much happening in the water levels dropping, in the number of dams that are built along the Nile, and it affects the flow of water. Who are the people who are going to suffer? Is it us who are in Uganda? Is it the people who are living along the Nile? How many factories, how many industries are built along the Nile that pollute it on a daily basis? What's your contribution? How can you start realizing that this is like our mother? This is our mother. Without it, there's not going to be any life. We have to protect it. We have to clean it. We have to participate. So we needed to show this on the design of the stage. And I sat down with a team of the of the Sudanese young people who were enthusiasts and who believed in ideas. We looked at our design and they had their contributions. And I'm happy to say that the idea that we created in the end wasn't mine. This is mainly because we tend to forget that when you come with a project into the country, the people's involvement and participation is very much important. We shouldn't just buy ideas from Europe and implement in our countries. Let the people feel their participation, localize the idea. And to me, it was successful because everybody participated. We had sleepless nights creating this beautiful stage. The few that we are lucky to step on it will share the story. But most importantly, we all were together working building it together. We shared so much of, about our cultures. I knew Goraza, that it is so azed. I was so much in love with the connection, the talk that we have, and I, it will forever stay in my memories. And the trip to the pyramids will always inspire me for the next 50 years. Thank you so much for listening to this information.